rival obviously brings it there towards the end. And, you know, these guys representing Europe, this would be a, I mean, historic is probably an overblown word for this scenario, but it would be one of the first times that we really see Europe excel here in the console series. And you were actually talking to Rival earlier about how they prepared for this matchup. And, and, as, and as far as Europe kind of rooting for each other, it's not just Rival. It, it is also a little bit of the Fable guys getting involved, too. Yeah, I thought it was super cool, actually, that uh, the Fable confirmed that they were just sitting there going through like a little bit of the VOD review alongside mm -hmm. Arrival. And I think that's really cool because even though Fable did drop both of their sets yesterday, I mean, they're still talented players. They're still guys who definitely understand the game. And when yep. you are viewing it from that overhead perspective, it brings a totally different level of insight having these guys being able to participate. So I, I just think that it, it is such a neat thing watching a region truly come together to try and defeat yeah. the NA overlords. They're all sitting outside right now in the viewing area. You've got uh, you've got Vaporish Coast dad, and you've got a couple of other dudes kind of representing the coach, obviously representing the org, and then the entire Fable squad sitting right there as well, rooting for these guys. It's it's definitely a region, and it's one of those things that's infectious. Every time I pass by that room, they're hooting and hollering and screaming, and uh, that's a really really big deal to have those players in the corner. So. Not only just there, but like you mentioned, also helping out with the X of the nose. Having fresh eyes on the VODs, certainly a good look. Elevate going to ban up the Robin and the Terra. I didn't like that last time around. And Rival, on the other hand, Odin has been so popular as a ban choice here for good reason. Right at Tosker, though. I could definitely see that being yeah. a first pick choice here for Elevate, potentially. I, I think that... The times that we have seen Rat come into play at this console land, he has tend to run it in the jungle. And Dr. L especially has had some very standout performances on that Rotot Oscar jungle. And I also think that Rapio in this first match of the day had just had an excellent performance on the Rat. Yeah, without a doubt. And he, even yesterday... The Ratatasker was the one that was really running things for Dr. L. Fantastic presence, and it gives him a threat. Even if he doesn't make the gank with him hovering in the air and mid-team fight, you know, we, t we were talking about messing up with the comms and everything. That's one of those worlds where when Rat goes in the sky, you got to talk about it. Ooh, but this Uller pick, I I'm really digging the, the Uller selection. I, I think that we've heard a little bit of the NA guys memeing about it, but... Uh, I think there's also, you know, a hint of seriousness behind the jokes. Uh, Crimson on Uller, yeah. he's had some, some very important performances and, and honestly won a couple of games for Elevate because of this pick. And when I see Elevate select Uller, I don't even, it doesn't cross my mind for a second that it's going to be for Mr. White. I, I'm thinking only Crimson <laughs> is going to be playing this god and... I could possibly be wrong. Uh, for all we know, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll see Uller Mr. Solo. White. In fact, <laughs> that, that'd be a good one. Throw him into the solo lane. Totally style. <laughs> Kukulin and Ratatasker on the other side, and I think Rival do a great job here of taking the Ratatasker early away from Elevate. We we're just discussing how much of an impact that Dr. L has made on that character. So taking that away from Dr. L should be a nice look. Kukulin, again, just <laughs> give your solo laner, give Predators that ability to go ahead and push forward. We were watching him hit four man ultimates before, so really impressed with that pick. And I was waiting for this one to happen. Ratatasker and Zeus. Rival getting both of these picks to run back here in uh -oh. game two is a huge risk potential for Elevate. They have to have known that this is what was going to happen if they left these guys open. I'm assuming that they feel as though the pressure provided by the circuit is going to be enough to where you can get in and then hopefully look for that get out potential. But it's still just one of those. Yeah. I, I feel as though it's a bit of an unnecessary risk. It, it, it might be tough, but I love the Hunter selection here. I mean, this is, uh, you're saying Zeus wants to get out. I'm looking at the two basic attack characters and Elevator going to send him to the sunken place. Uller in on the hands of Crimson, then Soul in the hands of Mr. White. I mean, these guys are, are the dudes that love playing these characters. They might not be meta, but they are certainly capable of doing the dirty work. So I like these selections for these two guys. I think the main concern I have about Elevate revealing so early on though that they're looking for an early uh, or a double hunter composition in mm -hmm. a way is that Arrival can now just pick two really frontline heavy characters that are just going to provide a, a ton of interrupt, maybe even gods that can prioritize items such as Hyde Nemean, Midguardian. You've got to worry about 
Breastplate of Valor because it's such a cheap, a high physical protection item. And thorns. There's always the threat of thorns. And I think that if Elevate are to try and make this Uller Soul combination work, Fafnir would be a, a very nice god pick selection oh, for yeah. them. Rival has an opportunity to ban it here, but I'm not sure that Rival views Fafnir as enough of a threat to warrant that sort of ban. Well, certainly thinking about it here, and Coach Joey there has a lot of input because, again, Fafnir, I think, is the de facto choice. I think it's the correct choice in black and white. But when you're looking at drafts, you also have to take into account what does your teammate, what does the enemy team actually play? Do they only have the Fafnir? That's the biggest question. So, I mean, Rival right now, or that's probably the discussion right now. Fafnir is what we should ban if this is a, if this is the Smite SATs, you ban the Fafnir. But in this arena, does Elevate have the Fafnir? I think they do, and I highly doubt that I and the Hamster is going to want to play gods such as Geb. I think the Kumakarna is an interesting band choice because Rival could have possibly used it for their own. Yeah, thinking. that's I, I exactly think, where I mean, I that was. was the EU response that we saw from PC as, a, as an answer to that double hunter factor because you have such a massive attack speed slow with the mm -hmm. Kumakarna kit and the Mez in general, all that interrupt, but RDO... Still a wise choice. Straight for the circuit. All eyes on him. That's a real. Uh, that's one of the characters that I think gets shut down hardest with the RDO cripple field. Characters like Circuit and Tier who rely on their dash to be offensive really get hurt. I mean, sure, Uller won't be able to jump away, but that's not that big of a deal. It's really about the initiation factor. The Caprizi salad coming out. Capri and Amaterasu. This one's a nice one for Elevate, but certainly characters that we don't see every day. And some very unconventional picks, I think, for Elevate. And I, I don't have a, a massive issue with this draft, but no. it does feel a little bit awkward. It, it's just that just typically when you see him. a Matarasu in a pick, it's because the team wants heavy mobility because they want to try and run you down. They want to try and chase after you. But when you're also trying to run the double hunter composition, which I do feel as though this soul is going to lean a little bit more towards the hunter side of things as mm -hmm. opposed to the mage. And, and and so that's where I get a little bit concerned because a Matarasu with two hunters isn't anywhere near as scary as a Matarasu with like heavy dive assassins. Sure. And I think that the Ardeo is going to provide enough peel between herself and the Kakolin to try and play the deterrence factor for Dr. L there on that circuit. I will say that I really actually like the Kepri here. This is a composition. We watched how much how, was, how, how much control Zeus had by way of violence. Kepri's going to be able to put that bubble on circuit, let circuit jump on the Zeus, and if Zeus turns and burns, well, he gets another life. So is this draft enough for Elevate to bring us to game three? I think that Elevate are a strong enough team to where we could definitely possibly see a game three, but I also feel as a rival outdrafted Elevate here in game two. Couldn't say it better myself. Let's get right to the action. Hindu and Tolly, bring it to us. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And the one thing about this draft, looking at it, Tolly, is I'm looking at Kepri and I'm looking at Circuit going, well, you two need to have good games. Yes. Here. Execution is what I'm seeing from Elevate. They need to be able to look for their dive potential and look for the revive potential. It's yeah. very high risk. High reward. And I like this mindset, but after losing game one in the manner that they did, can they bounce back mentally? And they're going to have to because the early game is going to be very important to them as well. With a circuit as well, very important. The reason I'm bringing up the Kepri have been an important pick and like it has to have a good game here for I Am The Hamster is the fact that, well, Zeus can play around that revive very well of like, oh, you're low. Let me just throw some stacks on you. We won't pop it until it goes off and then... Pull the trucker hard as time true. Would say. Even though you do find the revive, yeah. you're going to be right next to the Capri once you revive. So Quite if, a few if things. Zeus has cooldowns, you might be in trouble. Again. Yeah. Rivals uh, drafter as well, I was really interested in because they banned Kumba Khan. And at first, I was saying to you, and I'm like, why would you ban Kumba here when they've got a soul and an Ul? It's yes. because they were going for the RTO with themselves instead and making sure they couldn't have the Kumba Khan. The cripple minefield. You're shutting down Sarkat's yeah. ambush, the death bane. That's two options taken away. Uller doesn't have natural CC immunity, so if you stick on him, then he's going to force the beads just to jump away. Who do you guys at home think will win this game? Mostly you voted rival last game. The desk as well, talking about the draft. I feel the draft did go rival's way here, but you can't count Elevate out. They are the number one team uh, of North America since the start of this year. Can they try and bounce back to get themselves to the finals? Looking like a grouping from Elevate. They need to find that early lead. And we saw what Rival were able to do last game with that lead. They just did not let go of the yeah. pressure. Fighting in all three lanes whenever they can find that hole to loop through. Just dropping awards here. 
right at the red buff, making sure that Elevate won't get a cheeky invade off. Now they do have the pressure Elevate early with the Ool and the Sir Ket in the early game. They could start to apply a lot of pressure to 50 meter fly Zeus and put that behind earlier on in, put that behind earlier on in this game which could relieve the pressure that they found they were against after the start of game one. It's all about how the beginning of the game begins. High execution, though. Can Crimson connect that axe stun from a distance to allow Dr. L to follow up? We'll play, pay a little bit of attention once the laning phase starts there. Tell me, though, solo lane, right? Uh, Amaterasu, we don't see too much in the solo lane. You, you, you expect to lose lane with her in terms of just going to farm under the tower. This is a chance for Rival to really get pressure again in this lane with Predators, who had such a good game one. He could start to control this right-hand side of the map solo as the Kukulun. Knowing how aggressive Predators is, I don't expect anything less and than look at, that. Look at it, Predators. He might go for a cheeky steal. This is very confident from the Kukulun. Look at him. He's positioned near the speed buff. He might be looking to try and catch the speed if he can. No one's noticed yet. Minimap will give it away. Walks in, looks for the steal. Gets oh, it. Oh, he stole the speed. He can also look for the teleport to go back to the laning phase so he won't lose a single minion. What a start from Rival. What a small play yep. to shut down Dr. L. Allow Rapio full reign on the minimap. Five, sorry, six Assassin's Blessing stack versus the two from Dr. L. And the main thing is it's just delaying Circuit, getting the power spike, and of course the all in the mid lane. Neither of them will hit level two very quickly now. Obviously, they're going to take a little bit of time, so it's going to force them to be slower than that of Rapio on the Ratatoska. Predators hugging that wall allows him to get the experience from both worlds. The blue buff and also the laning phase. Ooh. Nexim is trying to go for his own blue, but Rapio has other intentions. Yeah, Rapio going to try and steal that one away, but didn't do so. Mm. Great work from Nexim is there on the Amaterasu to secure that for himself. Bit of a misplay there from Rapio. This was kind of the design of this, is to put the circuit behind and try and invade some jungle to keep the pressure going. That's true but still getting some of the small ones is a good look at the end of the day. Bay Porsche goes taking a little bit of poke, but so is Mr. White, forced to go into the Sapphire. He is vulnerable ever so slightly. Yeah, plenty of potions, though, between those two Hunters, so they should survive for the time being sustained and back up. Dr. L trying to abuse the left-hand side. Predators, though, against Neximus. He's not respecting this matchup very much. The Archers are really making an impact there. Predators getting low, and Neximus just sustaining a little bit better. I think Neximus could look for a solo kill, actually, once he hits level three with that silence, but he got his aura level two to be able to sustain a little bit further. I like that idea considering he did secure the blue buff. If he didn't get his own blue buff, he would have probably went for the dash. Well, this is what you want from a Sir Cat early pressure on him. They're looking for Dinosaur, but the CC chain just wasn't clean enough. He will scuttle away back to the safety of his tower. A little bit far forward there, Dinosaur. Be careful, my friend. They push coast. Punish you, Mr. White, for his transgressions. Oh, needed an extra basic attack to do so, but Hamster doing a good job body blocking, but there's no dash. Onto Vapor Rapio Coast, they could have went on him. Might be able to find something. No blink available. Just trying to dash in range. The separate wears up. Great little duck coming out from the Kepri, but it won't be enough. Fantastic beads from Rapio to turn that around as the speed buff. Looks like it was stolen again by Predators. He's still looking to fight, but he's between a rock and a hard place. His next is making the rotation. Salmon Leaf is good, but it didn't time it well. And the third rotation trying to survive, not successful in doing Tony, so. Tony, why didn't he leap over the wall there with that leap? Why did he use it on him? Was he just, he, did he think the transform would save him more? He wanted to juke away the Amaterasu second ability. Okay. He mistimed it a little bit. It was just a guessing game. It's very hard to really get the sign of when Amaterasu is actually going to release it. It's an activated ability. And yes, to build a little bit of rage on top of it. Because when you do transform, you're getting your vent anger passively. So that increases your movement speed. Sure. And when you transform, you're getting that extra protection to be able to survive a little bit longer. And maybe that physical power for you can find a way to turn it around. So elevate one to one with Rival. Bigger news though, Rival did get the first blood on the left hand side first of all. So that's where that bonus gold has come from. Pressure's kind of been relieved now in the jungle for Elevate. Based off the fact that Rival made a couple of mistakes across the map and trying to keep the advantage going. What Predators is doing is kind of a double-edged sword here. They're definitely shutting down Dr. L to allow Rapio a lot of freedom. Yeah. But by Predators being this aggressive, Neximus, which should be struggling in the early game, is doing A-OK. -okay. He's not losing many minions under his tower whatsoever. He's still in the same pace. And this pressure for Rapio has allowed him to now hit level 5 a little bit quicker. And the bait of the abduct was used nicely there. I am the hamster. 
Wiz really just tripped into that one more than anything else. The abduct was played for, gotten, and they find themselves the kill. You can tell Rival really are comfortable with this pick. They had the option to go for Sir Ket if they really wanted to, but instead going for this global pressure on the Ratatasker, Dr. L, actually blinking to look for just a back camp steal. This is the kind of mentality that he has going into the rest of the game is like, man, I'm so far behind. I'm going to use my relic just to steal back in. And I think that was more to do with the speed of it because he knew Rapio was in left for a moment, but we'd call into base. And if he was an extra few seconds later, he might have been caught there trying to steal those. So take him away early. But it does stop the circuit blink initiation that you like to see. But the problem here is that Elevate don't really... I'm sorry, Rival didn't see the blink happen, so no. they still have to play around as though the blink is still available. That's very true indeed. A lot of people... We have the option of being spectators. Well, the opportunity to be spectators, just like you guys at home, and see the bigger picture. Not all the players get to see that from their point of view. The transcendence in mid lane, though, for Crimson is online and stacking away. 50 meter flies did a good job of staying in this lane and not taking too much free poke in that mid. As we look to the right inside, Nexum is starting to put a bit of a beat down on Predators now. Still doing a good job. This is the kind of Amaterasu you're really expecting. Oh. Now oh. going forward, not going to commit uh -oh. on the tower dive. Didn't really see Rapio. There is no vision, but didn't want to even take one single tower shot. But the dash will be available for Neximus to get back, and Predator's getting very low, but has the ultimate available. No, he what? doesn't. Sorry, but he's going to have the rage. There's the rage root connects. Neximus dashed in for the kill. The bait was real. Bit of a misplay from both Predators and Neximus there, but it worked out in Rival's favor. Neximus definitely wishing he had his ultimate for that one. The disengage would have been really clean. Dr. L. Surprised probably as much as I am that his blue buff was not even being looked at afterwards. I think Predator's a little too low to try to make that play happen. Definitely an interesting solo lane between the two. Mid lane, Crimson under pressure. Will miss the axe there just off the mark, but it did cancel Dinosaur getting the root that he was looking for. Fly couldn't really follow up there though. Very low on mana, but three members of Ryan will now start to pressure mid a little bit more. Crimson trying to use the mana that he's getting from Transcendence to be that lane bully, even against two members. I like the idea, 50 meter Fly with only about 20% mana will back to base. Gives a little window for Crimson to clear the wave first and then look for the mobility. The advantage that Rival had in the mid phase was that the mobility aspect. They didn't have the power to match the Transcendence, but Finishing off those pen boots, 50 meter fly could have looked to play aggressive, but the silence is where the action is at. Just under a thousand gold in favor of rivals so far in this game. The experience difference, well, that's not really that important at the moment either. This is much better position for Elevate. Uh, eight minutes in, a minute's time. There were 3,000 gold that's in true. game one, down. Now they're at least a little bit, well, they've, they've stemmed the bleeding a little bit more so. There's still another minute and a half to <laughs> see if they're gonna be on the same Can pace. Can they do that though in a minute and a half, 3K? Uh, a could. tier two tower, maybe? Well, well they, they were d up three, three and a half thousand. They're only up about a thousand now. I'd say it's doable if they can find multiple kills and multiple waves. As the game progresses, the minions start scaling a little bit better oh, with the gold characters. Characters. A little bit greedy. The rage is about to fall down, and Rappi is going to have to go to the sky to help out. But it might be too late in getting here, but Prudence with a good juke has allowed him to survive for a moment, and now that's baited Rapio into an awkward position. There's no further follow-up really available, though. A free pick for Elevate in the jungle, where they just didn't recognize what was going on. See, this is the early struggles of Predator. He's a great mechanical player, yes. Oh, that thought the Crimson landing his shots. Gonna look for the chase, but not will do so quite yet, because Elevate gonna get a tier one tower on the right side. Rapio getting bullied away. I'm not sure if they can do it on their own just yet, Tully. There's only a couple of minions left, so they're gonna have to relieve that pressure. But two on three in the jungle. Crimson just made Vaporish Coast vapor. Dino saw, well, he could become extinct any moment, but he is a bear after all and will be able to dash away. Elevator now getting into this game. Elevator just grouping up. The four-man yep. gank on the right side, taking advantage of Predators. Now three-man swarming against the young hunter from Rival. He got stunned from behind. He didn't even see it coming. Couldn't react in time either. Mounter Archery was still available, but the beads into Mounter Archery needed to be executed if he wanted to survive that engagement. It's funny because the one thing you don't really see in the game, Tully, is how the momentum swing can really have an impact. Because, yeah, at the moment, Elevate's still down in gold and experience, but it feels like they're starting to gain the momentum ahead of Rival now. Rival trying to make things happen, and it goes against them multiple times, and then means, well, Elevate are the ones catching back up. Unless Dr. L lazy backs in the jungle, and Rapio finds him. Won't continue the chase, however. He comes up happy enough. It did. Did Rapio use his beats That's there? That's true. He, wanted yeah. to, uh, he was thinking that he was going to get uh -oh. disrupted, and now using the ultimate to avoid the damage out of Neximus. That ultimate 
can do so much damage if all three shots connect. Respecting that fact, using the ultimate defensively allows Predators now to make some plays if he really wants. Maximus looking really good in this lane though, in all honesty. I mean, Amaterasu not really been in amongst the meta too much in the solo lane. But that does mean people forget how to play against her and deal with her in the lane in phase. And He's actually making good work of this happening against like a Cullen and the Ratatoska gang. A lot of it has to do with Predator's double invading speed, but simultaneously yeah. dying on the second one. First one allowed Neximus to freedom to at least push the first wave. Dr. Al was looking for a kiss and he'll give one to Rapio. Rapio didn't really yeah. want to receive He's that. Dead. But he the boys, to chase. I don't think, no, 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 he does, he does. He did, oh, he did need to chase, tick. he needed that auto. Oh, man. But, but Crimson might be able, able to pick it up, ax to the back of the rat's head. Think bit of overkill there, but you know, it'll get the job done. Now the invade could happen, or oh, even more pressure. Trying to go for even more Dr. L, zigzagging away from the lightning and respecting Hamster's rotation. That's the only reason the Death Bane was used offensively, knowing that the Scarab's blessing right around the corner. So finding the kill onto Rapio with a great rotation from Crimson. It needed that extra help to secure the kill. Left Harpy's gonna go the way of Elevate. Gold Fury is available, as is the Oracles, but Elevate looking to abuse the jungle on the left. They will steal away the red buff. Crimson picking that one up, now level 12. So his secondary relic should be online momentarily. Looking for more traits in the solo lane. This game is basically evened up at 10 and a half minutes. Nothing mm. too much to worry about. And a lot of cooldown reduction from Dr. L with that Yoden's Wrath. I like the idea, trying to get off more of these poisoned last breaths and it's going to just deal so much more damage the flat penetration from the side and with the death vein as long as he can connect that basic attack that's what he's oh, really looking for oh doctor was lazy backing and got caught by rapio couldn't get in range in time to try and collapse doctor l will escape with his life there but he won't be happy about that that's twice in the jungle now where he's just trying to be backing and people have caught him surprised that they're not going for the pyromancer with a couple members mm. in the mid lane as well you're seeing the proxy farm from predators between that tier one where it used to stand in the tier two, but instead just casually farming away, waiting for that blue buff to respawn. Rival missing an opportunity to look for an objective. If you just tuned in as well, this is the lower bracket finals. The winner of this best of three will move on to face Astral Authority in the finals later on today. Rival just need this one win to put it to bed. They're on match point, but have they? Well, they're fighting into this one a little bit better than previously thought of how the picks and ban situation went for this team too. Got to keep the work going, though, because the longer this game goes, rivals do get stronger. Elevate bouncing back pretty well mentally, I would say, yeah. considering it was 19-2 to two at the end of game number one. A very unpredictable score there. Normally, it'll be a lot closer when you're getting this deep in the competition, but rival getting the better end of it. This time around in game two, I think that one game win they had, making them feeling a little too confident. Dr. Rell under a bit of pressure here. He's trapped in that cripple field for a moment, but that's revealed. You lived as the abduct hits Dino. Dinosaur, but Dinosaur tanking off to take a couple of the shots to the face now, especially with that sovereignty already online. Elevate still trying to make things happen. I think they do, Tolly, too. Their, their composition does scream a little bit more early game to me. Elevate's composition? Yeah. I would definitely agree with you. Crimson playing the Uller in the mid. Up in the sky goes Rapio, landing on to Mr. Hamster after the root. Zeus ultimate on top. No, it's actually switching to Dr. L. Just keeping Dr. L busy, and Dr. L's been pinched by Vaporish Coast too. The archery comes out, and Predators over the wall with the Salmon's Leap will get the kill. Great knockup from Predators too, looking at the hamster. And the transform. hamster's about to fall down too. He transforms as well. Two victims are dead out of Elevate. Rival with a five on three advantage. Where are they going? Rotation from Neximus. He has a lot of mobility. Where is Mr. White if going, wants though? to keep going, Mr. White, not sure what he's doing because Rapio right behind him. He's on Team Order. This is chaos out of the map. Get out of the jungle, Crimson. Meanwhile, he's been zoned out by Predators. And I was talking about early pressure being important for Elevate. They was finding the way back into it, but I think they've just given up a gold That's fury true. here. Elevate giving up a little bit too much. Rival doing a great job forcing the ultimate from Hamster. Recognizing Dr. L was so far isolated on the north side. Yeah. And Rival now with a pretty significant lead considering that the game was almost even. It's funny because Elevate yesterday, they talked about how they felt in team fights, they felt stronger in team fights against Fable, but against Rival, it looks like Rival are the ones coming out with the goods to answer back while Elevate were expecting to be an easy win. Rival were almost like scattered cockroaches in that fight. Hamster was the first victim and then switching was Rapio onto Dr. L. Action has not stopped whatsoever, forcing the disengage out of one Neximus with enough mobility to get out of that one if he really wanted to, but the way Elevate were grouped up was not cohesive. They got mm. picked off one by one. 
Staggered ultimate, Mr. White at the end, tail end of that. Not even sure what the mentality Four was. Oh man, gank on the right hand side against two. Dinosaur under pressure, stunned in place. Next to him with a very good stun setup spreads. for his team. The poison spreads to Pettitus, but he's still very, very healthy here. They need to go for the tier one tower because they're losing a lot of pressure in the mid lane. A lot of free minions falling down for this big four man rotation. Elevator not done yet. They're still in it to win it trying to bounce back in this best of three set knowing where their strengths and advantages lie if they're the ones forcing these engagements finding the victims kind of isolated and staggered the same way the rival did earlier they can be on top of it they need to abuse this power spike from crimson transcendence yes. fully stacked you got the crusher for the ability damage this is where Elevate truly shine in this early mid-game portion. And you're looking at Crimson now, who has a three-level lead, or two-level lead, I should say, over 50 meter fly. That's where the experience has been evened out once more in favor for Elevate. And all is starting to swing. The penetration, not just the extra attack speed and damage, but oh no, mistakes made him. Fate Punch goes popping off. He's oh, happy with he's that one. He's feeling that one, and he's not done yet. He's actually going to continue to go for the tier one mid because Rapio is right beside him. He knows Dr. L is right right around the corner. He's going to look for the counter gank. Lazy back again. Gets caught in the jungle. Th three times a charm. Surely maybe they'll catch him this time around. But a good stun from Crimson relieves the pressure. Rapio though with the jump. Forces out the ambush. Back harpies are the result. Trying to get something for nothing. Tier 1 tower falls in the dual lane. Rival continue the pressure in that duo jungle. Stripping away that red buff. I think Dinosaur is in position to make something happen in middle. All of rivals scattered in this mid lane. You can see the two hunters on camera there at the bottom of your screen, and Mr. White does not look too happy about how things are going. Coast a little bit more confident with this and starting to group up with his team now. The real hunters, the dueling hunters coming into play. Tier 1 tower now down, but next to him is round the back. But Dr. L on the right, he doesn't have much mana to really pursue this engagement. Knock up onto Hamster Predators is about to transform, and he's being the bait. He's zoning away three while Neximus needs to disengage. He took too much damage. Very messy fight, but Predators to keep the aggression going towards Mr. White. It will be a fallback call from Rival, knowing they get what they were after. The Tier 1 tower, all three towers of Elevate are down. They've only got tier two towers remaining now and just that one on the right hand side that's come out from Elevate. Elevate could have definitely swung that in their favor if mm. Dr. L had more mana to play with. He didn't back in time because of Rapio being so annoying, forcing the chase for so long. It actually forced Dr. L in a position where it's like, all right, I don't want to back now. I'm going to go for the back ride camps, giving up the tier one tower. Neximus swinging him from the left was a little too late to create that distraction to keep Rival off of their tier one mid. It's funny because when we're watching Elevate in these team fights, totally, it feels like they are very sporadic and split up in it. But then I get, I'm thinking, well, there is a Zeus on Rival's team, and True. you don't really want to group for that being range of chain lightnings. But it does make those team fights very awkward then. That's very true. The Zeus juice is going to be even stronger Oops. when you're grouped up. But you have to make sure that when you make those groupings, you understand either where the Zeus is or that you're walking into your own awards where you can identify that there is no one around that corner. Good opportunity found there by Elevate to take the turn one tower. But staying for that wave could have been a bit dangerous. They will get away with it though as they slink back towards their own half of the map. Dr. L hanging around this mid to left hand side jungle looking for a potential pick. May find Rapio rotating around, but Rapio has a three level lead here and maybe he'll want to take that match up on. He did. Axe out, looking to move a fly, but flies doing okay at the back. Neximus zoning. now a little bit far forward. Doing the zoning ultimate, Dr. L's forced to retreat. Neximus is going to be the target double knockup as well. Scarab's busting the use, giving himself the mobility. He will get rooted, double rooted. Neximus doesn't have the Scarab's busting Dr. this L time. goes to the back, looks for fly, but fly will just pull the horn and Dr. L falls down. Chain Lightning was good enough for that. Mr. White now under pressure has to use the Aegis to escape to separate down two. Crimson has to slink back through the right hand side and look at the timing of this, Tully. The Gorpio is just spawning. So awkward for Elevate. Unfortunately for Dr. L, when you go for the blink, that means you have to itemize for the beads or the Aegis in the two level 12 marker. You can't do both. Going for the beads allows Fly to get off all that damage. And Chile. And Chile could have been really good for yes. Circuit here. Specifically against the Zeus, who's going to look for multiple attacks. Gold Fury down for Rival. They take a bit of the lead again in this game, stretching to around 3,000 gold now. Experience is definitely favoring jungle for Rival, but favoring the mid lane for Elevate. That's true, but the Zeus will eventually catch up and start to kind of tip the scales mm. in Rival's favor, whereas Uller at level 20 is still going to be Uller at level 18. Not much has really changed in that regard. So, but. 
You look at the flip side, level 14 Circuit is way more behind yeah. than this level 15 Zeus, and that's where Rival can continue to look for the pressure. He, she just died so quickly now that forces Dr. L to go for more health, going for maybe a Mad Guy's Cloak. Yeah, trying to get a little bit more protection for himself and the CC chains that could come out from Rival here. Bit of relief pressure from both teams now. I will say I like how Nexus has played this game, though. He's the one that stood out for me, especially after the... The unfortunate performance of game one on the RTO where he did get beat up quite a bit by that Hercules. He's made an impact for himself this game and for Elevate. But on the right hand side, he could be in a bit of trouble here. Forced to work defensively after a nice little catch of Rapio on the dash. Rapio dashed in, catches the dash out of Neximus, forces the defensive ultimate. That's what you're really looking for out of your jungler. Look for those little weaknesses in holes to exploit. Rapio been known to make those kinds of methodical plays. Even going to catch out Mr. Hamster there. Four on one. A lot of trouble here for Hamsi. He will use his ultimate for mobility. They could still dive this for the kill when it wears off. He's going to die under the tower. The dunk was well timed by Rapio. Close enough. And that's a free kill. This is what Elevate did last game, though. Go for the split push toll in. They're going to find a tier two, maybe even a, a more pressure in mid. They're getting the tier one mid, getting the tier two in the dual lane. However, Rival need to get something. That's why they're going for the fire chai. This Neximus right here, trying to make it happen, but Dr. L right beside him. Elevate, get the fire chai. They stole it. Dr. L and Neximus came in big in a huge right time. Ripping it away from Rival, who just didn't respect the two characters in there. And 50 meter fly could even die here. The body blocks are big. Big Porish Coast gets a double kill. Don't know where you're laughing, boys. You lost the FG. They did lose the fire giant, but they got two kills in response. Dr. L and Nexum is dead. Means that the front line is only Mr. Hamster for 20 seconds. Could go for a tier two mid tower. That's what they're thinking of doing at the moment as they push down. But the rest of Rival, they're getting the back camps as Rapio and then backing is 50 meter fly. A missed opportunity to get at least a tier two tower after losing one of the dueling. I can see that. I just think it's such a silly mistake from Rival there. I mean, just zone. Like, you have everyone that just zone one of the characters away. It's okay. It's the chaos and the confusion sure. that Mr. White deployed. Yeah. That split push opportunity forced Rapio back to the base to defend that one. Here comes Neximus. Here comes Dr. L. And then all of a sudden it's a four on two. And then you got to worry about balancing that four on two versus the fire giant. Even if you do zone the one person zoning two is doable, but sure. Dr. L is eventually going to get through that person. That's fair. I don't think Mr. White could have got a Phoenix in time though. By the time they, if they all stay the fire giant they get Fire Giant around Possibly. all five members, and then they can try and turn it back around. But if they don't get the Fire Giant and lose their Phoenix, then all of a sudden the game is dominated you are right. by Elevate. So sacrificing one, not both. You're so nice to him. I'm in there. I'm out there going, man, you should have just got Fire and zone correctly. But Tolly, you are indeed correct. Better safe than sorry. Rival, though, have to slow the pace down a moment or two now, just for a fraction. Without the Fire Giant available for them, they can't keep the bullying going because Elevate, one or two members still have it, and that's important for them. Mr. White with the Fire Giant can do a lot of damage. Dinosaur is going to get pulled back in. Stellar Burst, Supernova, Silence. Dinosaur is at his last legs. But in the sky is Rapio looking towards Crimson. He split the difference, so is he looking for Mr. White too? Good knockout from Predators with the Thorns down. Rest of the team in trouble. Rapio being focused on by Dr. L. Big old spin. Dr. L on the run. And the trucker horn was pulled yet again from his 50 meter fly. Predator zoning for as long as he could. He allowed that play to happen, but he had to die in response. It's a two for one. 15 seconds remains on Dinosaur. So that could be the opportunity that Rival really need. Keep in mind that Crimson and Mr. White, the two tower shredders, yeah. has Fire Giant. No Kasari on Elevate yet from either the solo laner or the support, but they're going to have the burst damage to bring down this tier two. And now we've pretty much got an even game. Rapier's going to be careful here. If he gets noticed, he could be in trouble. They stole it with one base. And Crimson even <laughs> taunting at the end of that one. At 23 minutes, level 20. I don't think Rapio is too concerned about losing his speed buff as long as he doesn't lose that tier two talent. Hang on a right. second. It's a jungler. Don't, don't, don't tell lies now. Don't tell lies. Ah, it's a jungler. He's ah, tilted. Right. He right. is tilted off the face. Look at his face. Tilted. He's like, how belief. could you guys? I was trying to get my speed buff. You guys give up the tier two mid tower and my speed buff. Yep. He's, he's not happy about that. No jungler ever is in the world. Gold Fury, though, has rival just taking it for free. Nobody's noticed from Elevate. I think they won't be happy with that, surely. Let me just give away free objective. 
is still valuable at this stage of the game. That's true. With Fire Giant, I'm exp I could have definitely seen Rival going, or sorry, Elevate going for the Gold Fury after the Tier 2 mid tower, but instead they were considering swinging to the Tier 2 on the right. They had Fire Giant for about a minute to a minute and a half before that. They did steal away the speed, but the better prize would have certainly been the Gold Fury, creating that separation even further, but Rival getting it makes it all even Stevens. Now with the state of the game, we're going to get to see a standoff at the fire giant a minute until it spawns both teams in arguably similar positions as you saw by the grass moments ago we're now going to be starting a situation where well this team fight could be the win or loss for elevate which means they'll be eliminated or take it to a game three dr l needs to be more patient about when he goes in he has mad guy's blessing that's going to be the factor if he's going to survive or not trying to all in the circuit here rapio was used across the map to try and get in range didn't even manage to get the bubble off of Dr. L, which is something that's very tricky for them to really do. And now Elevate on the turnaround, looking to pressure out. Neximus going to charge in, put some pressure down, has the ultimate available if he wants. Rival trying to fall back, hamster though, around the corner. For the root. He's looking for somebody. He's going to catch out Dinosaur. No, he actually backpedals it in the nick of time. Zeus ultimate being used just as zone, but it's not going to save Dinosaur. No, Dinosaur is dead, but Dr. L is very low, and Predator's giving chase. The ult used early by Hamster is going to get the ultimate off his Dr. L. The pop of the bubble is here. Rapio's on the way. Looking towards Who the black line, on? as is Mr. Fly. Nick's a miss in the back. Will sacrifice his life to allow the rest of his team to run away. Mr. White with a disapparate. He's about to fade away. His Predators leading the charge, forcing the jump out of the Uller. Sam and Leap will continue the pressure because Rapio is going. He caught Dr. Ellie, but it's not going to be enough. Rapio looking to look towards Crimson, who has to Aegis away. Beads used too. Autos from Fly. Needs the detonate, but Rapio will dash him for the kill and still survive. What a crazy endeavor between the two teams. Started off really by Rival, and then Neximus decided to keep the aggression going. That's true. Neximus chased him down because Hamster was looping around yeah. the blue buff. He got the route onto Dinosaur, but it was the Mad Guy's cloak that procced, so he was still able to run away. 50 meters fly ultimate separated that team fight for long enough to create the confusion as Neximus was the first victim for Elevate. It erupted on towards Crimson that couldn't escape under that tier 2 tower because Dr. L was the one that was saved originally from the Scarab's Blessing. So not much of a gold lead or an experience lead, but the fire giant around every member's waste of rival is so important, totally. Extra regeneration, extra damage, kill the structures. And with this being the second fire giant that respawned after the 25 minute mark, we're looking at a enhanced fire giant. 30% structure damage for rival to be able to start swinging at these towers. And more importantly, taking that away from Elevate, considering that it's an Uller late game with yeah. a Soul late game. If it was Elevate to get the Fire Giant, I don't think Rival would have been closing out the set. Do you want to look for the split push again in this scenario, or do you just hit on a hard defense? You've got a good squad for defense, in all honesty. I would agree that the defense is more likely to be the safe call, but it's it wouldn't be unheard of, considering sure. that Mr. White with a Soul having a lot of damage once you have a 100% heat and the attack speed, even with some of the nerfs before, it's still a good idea to go for the split push if there's a timing window. Left side minion waves are relatively close to the sure. Phoenix. Now, I like what the call from Rival is here. Normally, you'll see them go for the left-hand Phoenix first to try and pressure that down, but by going to the right-hand side, the only thing Elevate can really look to get is the tier two and right, right? So if you all stay in that lane, it means, well, you can't go and split push this side of the map and get that free gold. Phoenix is definitely take a little bit longer. Elevate will not try and defend this tier two tower. They will surrender it this time round. And that rival will swing back to the jungle, heading towards mid. They're not going to continue the pressure. They want these last two towers. Between the two of them, it's 3,000 additional gold for rival, putting them at 75,000 if they are able to get it. Mr. White taking a pot shot with that stellar burst. Predators in the transformation, tanking it up for the moment. And this is another free tower. Rival sure. just going left uncontested. That tier two tower. If you're not defending a tier two mid at full health, you're definitely not defending that tier two left hand side with 10% health. And take into account the one reason you see these teams go for the towers is not just for the golden experience, Tolly. The Titan, the yes. end game raid boss gets weaker as it goes on. So it's easier to, you know, kill him at the end of the game. Those end game moments when you're trying to decide if this is the killing blow, trying to put all five members down the throne room, it makes becomes a lot easier of a call if there's no towers remaining. Exactly. Each tower enhances the Titans, uh, physical protections, magical protections, health, and the damage. So that'll allow Rival 
to make it slightly easier, basically heating up the knife before you put it through the butter. Definitely, definitely a well-played game from Rival, this one. I like the patience from this team. They, they are respecting Elevate here, in all honesty. Building this gold lead up to an insurmountable mount if they can, before they look to, to assault the base, in all honesty. They will have about a minute left with the buff after this, but I think they'll just wait for the next fire giant. It's possible that they have a window to at least look for a pick, but I don't expect Elevate to overextend yeah. anywhere near past their imaginary tier two tower line, let alone the Phoenix line. All they have to do is just wait for that fire giant to respawn. I'm talking about the fire giant respawning, Tully. If you Elevate, do you look to try and defend this still? It's a similar situation once the fire giant buffs true. Off. Six items deep for a rival. We're looking at about five to five and a half on Elevate. They could actually defend this yeah. if they really want to, but they need to be the wants to strike first. They cannot be engaged on because there's just too much confusion where Elevate can respond to. Hamster uses his ultimate on one target and mm. Rival just goes on another. In fairness, I mean, Elevate did stop the initiation last time round. If you think about the grand scheme of things, they tried to force it. It didn't work out well for them in the end. Rival putting down some deep wards and it'll be a, a moment of patience between the two teams. A whole two minutes. Got to wait for about, a, about that half. minute and 15 seconds as this enhanced fire giant will respond yet again trying to look for the Sentry Ward battles and looking at some of these items, going for a double height of the Mia line between Predators and Rapio. It's going to shut down Crimson, but Mr. White is more magical uh, damage more than the physical sure. side, so he's not going to be feeling that pain as much as Crimson will. Tully, in this game right now, which team would you rather be? Would you rather Rival. be Elevate? Would you rather be Rival? Just, Rival. Because, just because of the last fight? No, they're up a game. Oh, okay. I mean, just like in this game alone, no other factors. Definitely rival still, considering okay. you're up 10,000 gold. You're not really in jeopardy of losing a Phoenix split push. You pushed all the lanes pretty comfortably. You're the ones in the driver's seat. We are 30 minutes in the game, though, and one bad team fight from either side could be the end of the game, too. The problem here that I'm seeing from Elevate is the Uller. Uller late game is a little lackluster as opposed to a traditional mid mage. Now, that's where Mr. White tries to make up for by going sure. the soul. But his build is a little bit of both. You're getting the attack speed on the demonic grip and then you get magical power elsewhere. He doesn't really have that Fatalis ring for the mobility to amplify with a demonic grip. So he's just trying to get that magical power, but he's not really dealing the true damage that he needs. Third fire giant of the game is up and third fire giant of the game is down. No defense of that from Elevate. They have decided it's Phoenix or Bust for them here today. And the reason why I was saying that Mr. White can't get the damage off is because everyone is just focusing out the back line so hard that Mr. White is spending more time running <laughs> almost <laughs> than he runs. is dealing damage, sitting at 1-3-3, three, and three, trying to get back into this game, this Elevate defense needs to hold. If they lose one Phoenix, I don't expect them holding the second or third. Do you know what you need is a hunter sometimes, or like at least a dual lane player, the hunter position, is the ability for a support to be able to put you on their back so you can shoot backwards as you run away, you know? Just to make it a bit more fun for a you. A little backpack. Yeah. You should be I hope they do that. That'd be good. A little turret there. Next god design. Let's get on it, Ajax. We'll, we'll see if we can get that one in the game for you guys. It'd be a nice dream to see, you know, pick up a carry, put him in your backpack and ride him along so you can just shoot Freely. No, please. You don't like the idea? No. Imagine Sylvanas. Imagine you could mount Grover instead of Sylvanas and just shoot your soul abilities off the back of it. That would be scary. Having it a Sylvanas be. tank for your hunter like yeah. that. Yeah. Dinosaur, gonna tank up the Phoenix on the left hand side. No minions here just yet. They're gonna do a damage check and realize that Phoenix isn't really hurting Dinosaur right now. Predators then able to go to the back and try and force out some relics. Didn't get any though just yet, but Rapio in the sky. Trying to make it happen here. Predators zoning too long, but Dr. L will respond. And kind Hamster falls as Vape Porsche Coast is popping off there. Diving beyond the Phoenix. Needs to use the beats to avoid the Uller Axon as another jump from Crimson. The Phoenix on the left, very low. Minions trickling down. Rival successful with the Phoenix Siege. They are indeed. They only lose Predators there who went a little bit too deep. And by the respect of Rapio having to go back to base here, Rival will slow down the course of action for now. Plenty of time on the Fire Giant for four members though, Tully. They can definitely look at another Phoenix here. It's possible. 25 seconds on Hamster, 30 for Dr. L. Minion wave trickling through. They have two minion waves to decide how they want to go about this middle Phoenix Siege. Only RTO and all alts available. This is going to be a big one. 
I see what you did there. As Neximus gets stunned out, Rapio dashes in. Neximus less than half health. He dashes away just barely. The detonate was not enough to confirm the kill, but it was enough to get him away from the action to get a second Phoenix. And that's all Rival wanted was two Phoenixes down. They'll fall back through the jungle here. Going to take the safer option. Knowing the respawns were coming through from Elevate. Didn't want to risk going for that right-hand side Phoenix, especially with no minions. They will take a Pyromancer. They will purchase some items. And then they'll look for the final potential Siege of the Day. It would have took a long time to go for that Phoenix on the right without any minions. They need to shove all three of those waves. That one wave will fall to the tower, then they need to worry about two more waves before entering that right side Phoenix. And can, even without Fire Giant, Rival are still in position to get that right Phoenix with the fire minions trickling down the left and the mid lane. They just need to time their siege to match those fire minions and that third Phoenix should be free. The European console scene has had some trials and tribulations but Dr. L, wait a second, was trying to put some pressure on to a 50 meter fly. Were Beads already on cooldown though? Did he just use him? They just use them because they're upgraded, aren't they? Yeah. So that's going to be forced out of him. But Rival and EU as a whole has struggled on console. Lack of respect from That's North true. America. And a lot of that is down to them not playing to the same caliber. I think their first and only land victory was over Sword Gaming during Valencia. It was a while ago that they don't win many games, Europe, but today, and in this one, the fans at home are backing them. They're wearing the Rival colors too, so they've got a bit more support there. Maybe this is the one. Do you think the PC side of things gave them that confidence and resurgence that they really needed for Season 5? No. I think this is just these kids stepping up to the plate a little bit more so, learning from the past experiences playing against some of these North Americans and realizing that they're all on the same page this year a little bit more so. Everybody's still trying to work out the meta. And obviously the meta on the console and on PC, very similar. One or two differences, obviously, based off the fact that console, honestly, is a much trickier ball game to play. Rival, we're putting their trap card face oh, down, Neximus. and Neximus has activated it, forced to use the ultimate, and disengage from that one. The rest of Rival are should be free to confirm themselves that third fire giant. This really is a Rival team that's like, guys, let's not make a stupid mistake here. We've got two Phoenixes, we could go for the third, but just wait for fire, you know? Like, we could end and move on to the next game, the next series, but... Let's not make a mistake. We'll do this correctly. We'll wait for the fire. And that's just Elevate now going, well, we know what you're doing. There's nothing we can actually do about this apart from push out the waves and hope for the best. Almost cashing out Neximus, hiding under their own sentry wards is what you want to do when you have this kind of a lead. And when you're waiting for a minute and a half or yeah. so for the fire giant, that's the only thing you really could do. Just trying to set up an ambush around those sentry wards. However, Elevate with 81 and a half thousand gold collectively, they do have those six items completed. So this is the most defense that they'll ever have. If they can't defend here, sure. then it's game over. Yeah, Rival are walking away to go into the grand finals. They definitely I'll roll full build because all the relics are pretty much upgraded at this point too. Down the right hand side come Rival. Two members of Elevate currently in the mid lane. Dr. L going to try and flank around the back more than likely after he clears out that wave. But the assault is here and Dinosaur will lead them in. Maximus going to get rooted out here. No, he's actually going to continue to go past it. His predators knocking up Hamster so that he becomes the transformed enraged Celtic boy. Neximus at about 70% health. Predators zoning out Crimson on the left. The rest of Rival, they're thinking about going in off of Rapio's oh, ultimate. Oh, Neximus has already had to be ulted by Amna Hamster. Dr. L wants to get to the back, but the Phoenix is getting low and he's already down. Middle Phoenix due to spawn and Rival won't enter the throne room just yet. Let's Left hand Phoenix is up too. A lot of ultimates still available though, specifically the Zeus. The shot calling is so good here. Hamster, he actually just dashed it. He doesn't have Scarab's blessing. And now Rapio very low though. The Aegis will come into play and get him away. Middle Phoenix not being looked at. They're trying to get kills. Now it will fall down, but Rapio forced back to base. Rival won't look for the end again. All five members of LA still alive. I was expecting the Zeus ultimate immediately. Another trap onto Mr. White. Here comes Predators with a war cry, trying to create the confusion. Chain lining onto a bunch of members, doing quite a lot. But, but not enough. The aggression is on the left side. A lot of fire archers are flooding in, and that Phoenix is not going to stand for long. Well, they're all over there to defend it in time, but Rival have turned up too. 
Around the corner, Ply gonna get eaten, hit by the axe from Crimson, which was nice. Next to his has his ult up again. It's gonna go into the back line. Dinosaur stunning out three, forcing the Mad Guys Coke out of Dr. L. Last breath onto the RDO, trying to that juke spreads. and weep. The Cataclysm will not proc, Ooh. but it's Crimson that falls to 50 fly. meter fly. Vaporish Coast takes out another. Mr. White dead for 65 seconds. It's a five on three. Predators going into the back line, knocking up three, rooting another, dashing in. Warcry, and this could be the set. Rival have done it. They have defeated the number one seed out of Elevate, and now they go back to the finals. They wave goodbye to Elevate, and now they will get to meet Astral Authority in the finals later today. And they need to find their revenge. They lost yesterday one to two. It was a very close and epic set. You can see just how happy Rival are to make it to the grand finals, feeling very confident. I'm expecting quite a showing in this next set. Vaporish Coast there, that's his dad, I believe, in the background as well. Just congratulating for him and his team's performance today. It's a big thing for Europe because they've had, always been the underdogs on console, always seen as the, the whipping boys of the console scene. And they're starting to earn some more respect as time goes on. Now they find themselves up against Astral Authority, who they played earlier on this tournament, Tolly. Well, they beat one North American team. It's time for them to beat a second. After they beat Sword Gaming, in the Valencia land. They've definitely become a different team, especially when they picked up this former Enix roster. It's basically Rapio with four Enix members, and this is the all-star European console lineup that's allowed them to get to the grand finals today. Can Rival do it today, yes. do you reckon? Can they take on a, you reckon I, it could be Astral? I, I predict them to win. Really? Yes. Even after the performance yesterday yes. when they got beat? What is it about them that you, the reason that you feel that way? I just feel that w Rival are on the up and up and Astral and Elevate were on the down. Really? Well, MVP for that set. You guys and girls at home get to vote on that and let us know who you believe was MVP. What about you, Tully, for that one? It's really difficult to pinpoint real team. that last set. Predators was definitely zoning for a long time to enable everyone else to pop off. 50 meter fly found some picks onto Dr. L, which was crucial. Uh, Rapio definitely had a lot of good. I said pick one, tasker. not the whole team. That doesn't I'm just trying to well. highlight where they all did well. I'm going to give it to Rapio. Okay, well, let's head over to the desk to break down that wonderful set. <laughs> I totally just couldn't pick one, but I understand. <laughs> Rival looked fantastic as a unit, so Anatoly. I'm with you. Rapio did a lot of the uh, sort of setup. Predators made sure that everybody had room to breathe, and then everybody just did it. But I, you know. Big shout-out to Mr. Fly over there on the Zeus as this team makes it into the finals. Taco, I don't think Rival get to play Zeus again. I don't think Rival gets Zeus again. I'm not even sure they're going to be able to get the rat again. I think that this was a, a bit of an oversight by Elevate over everything else. Allowing Fly and Rapio to get the Zeus right of Tosker, I think, just provided way too much control and flexibility within the rest of Rival's composition because when you establish such an early... Uh, or such a, a burst damage mage such as the Zeus and then you have the right of Tasker who's just jumping all over the jungle causing such a heavy disruption factor so it never really allowed Elevate to kind of play their game. Elevate seemed to rely pretty heavily upon Crimson and Dr. L and I think game two was a perfect example of that because Crimson had a phenomenal start. He was killing it at the beginning. I mean at one point he even had like a hundred percent kill participation mm -hmm. four zero and one but he couldn't hold on to it because one guy can't do the work of five. Very, very true. I mean, he started that off with uh, three kills and no deaths, and by the time he had Transcendence finished, nobody really could touch him, but like you said, I mean, this is a team game, and the other players on Elevate, unfortunately, just did not step up, and honestly, l l let me uh, let me fix that one. I think it was less about Elevate not being able to step up, because they did. We saw the Fire Giant steal. We did see moments of brilliance. I think at the end of the day, this rival team just went in, man. I, I think rival just turned all the way up. I mean, <laughs> the, the volume dial, dial could go any further, it'd be broken because uh, Rival just came through with a vengeance. I mean, these guys are hungry to go against Astral like, yet again. And if I'm Astral, I'm a little bit concerned watching <laughs> Rival today because uh, the only thing that the set between uh, Astral so Authority I and uh, Rival really accomplished, I think, was just ensuring that they were going to be playing as aggressively as possible because they want to match that North America aggression. They want to show them that they can do it better. And I think that this could possibly be the very first time we see a true European upset occur. Yeah, and I think this is a new experience for the guys in North America. A lot of times when we see the international play, the Europeans are 
I get to be honest now because this team is very good. Nobody respected the European squads before. I'm sorry that was the reality of it. You guys just came and and, and, and nobody stood up. And then we watched this Vaporish Coast team really grow throughout the, throughout this year. And now Rival is just as strong as the other guys. I think that's the important part that you note, though, is that we get to watch it. These North American teams, like I, I don't think as many of them pay attention towards the European side of things because they're wor worried about their own uh, brackets and everything like that. Sure. But I, I do feel that from the caster's perspective, probably one of the primary advantages we have is that we do get to watch as all these players progress and develop over time. Yeah. And I think that it's fantastic seeing a lot of their individual growth and just how well they're able to put their differences aside in order to form this rival that we see today. So exciting watching these come these guys come through, formerly known as Enix, now rival with Rapio in the jungle. Rival go ahead and win their victory so that we will see them in the finals versus Astral Authority. Let's take a look at what the guys have to say after their performance. Congratulations, Rival, first of all, on your victory today. Um, coming to the set against Elevate, what was the expectation? Did it go as planned? Um, we sat down and planned out a few drafts last night. Um, we expected the Raven Jungle first game. We expected the Circuit uh, second game. Completely drafted around that, and it worked a treat. So now that you defeated this one North American team, you get to go for revenge on the second Astral Authority yet again. What would this victory mean to you guys? It means everything. So we, we've been a couple of years now, and EU has always been looked down at. Um, and just getting the first set over Elevate and proving that EU can do it. We feel like we should have had 2-0 against Astral yesterday, so we're looking forward to getting our revenge. I want to bring up that point that you made about EU being like seen as the underdogs, the whipping boys, as I called it earlier on. What has changed? What is the difference? What is the attitude like from the European scene now? Um, Why have we seen you guys step up? Better attitudes from the team. Uh, I made a roster change. Um, everyone stepped up, taking it a bit more seriously, scrimming five, six times a week. Um, I'd say that was it. In the end and conclusion of game number two, it was a very slow and methodical pace to end the game. How is the shot calling? Who is making the shot calls? And how is that going about to end the game? Um, so I was making the shot calls. Um, if you watched the games yesterday, you know we threw a massive lead against Astral. Didn't want a repeat of that, so we just thought, take all the Phoenixes, and then worst comes to worst, we can all in the Titan with a Zeus ult. There's no way they hold that. We don't want to keep you for too long today, but because obviously you've got another set to play now as well, you're going to go into this best of five with Astral having a one-game advantage. Does that change the strategy at all here today? Um, I don't think so. We want to win every game. Um, what's the prediction for the win? 3-1. Uh, three, three They've already got a game up, so it'll be 3-0, but 3-1 in the set overall. Yep. Well, congratulations again this far. Thank Good you. luck in the finals. We'll Thank catch you, you a little later on. Thank you. Thank you.